Okay, so I got a few questions from some of you guys talking about uh, why would I be running uh, Linux on a MacBook? What's the point? And um, so I guess uh, today's video is going to be about well, let's. What's one of my thoughts between Mac OS and Linux? So come along for the ride. It should be fun. So in today's video, I'm going to try and spend a bit of time highlighting some of the differences that I've noticed between macOS and Linux and why I'm kind of playing with both simultaneously um, because there are distinct things that I really, really like about either platform. Now, side note, on a quick follow-up from the last video that I did and I was talking about some of the thermal issues that I was having. Um, I suppose probably the easiest way to explain it is just to say that um, with a fair bit of tinkering, um, thanks to the MacBook fan control um, and also uh, using the proprietary NVIDIA graphics cards, not being able to use the integrated Intel card, uh, some, touch, some touchpad tweaks and some sort of tinkering around with some of the configuration files for the, the MacBook fan controller and uh, and what was the other thing? I think also, I, I've actually got it to, to run relatively cool, at least most of the time. Once it starts getting demanding, then things get a little bit warm as per usual. But performance is actually pretty nice now on, on Solus. Um, so rolling updates are great. LibreOffice 6.0, great. Um, yeah, that's, that's enough of that. So yeah, let's spend the next few moments just kind of looking over some of the stuff that I found really, really beneficial from uh, from both Mac OS and from Solus. I think we need to go to the desk first. Okay, first of all, I don't even know if you can hear this, but check this out. That is the fans going full tilt because of the screencaster. Anyway, moving on. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to mention in terms of what, why I prefer uh, Linux over um, Mac OS in some circumstances is probably kind of some of these are going to be pretty obvious to those of you who, who use Linux on the regular um, but for those of you who just kind of dabble in it um, then this is going to be some of the stuff that, that I notice the most. Um, first of all it's pretty obvious customization. This is something that you get uh, literally infinite options uh, to, to tweak the system out to the way you want it whether it's icons, whether it's the actual desktop environment, whether it's the, the keyboard shortcuts that control the desktop environment, um, the way it boots, the, what hardware is enabled, all of that kind of stuff you can control um, from the desktop in Linux, whatever that looks like. Um, so as you can see, kind of going through the, the budgie settings here, you can adjust um, and again, it depends on different desktop environments and what tools are pre-installed as to how much you can customize it. But customization is one of those things where um, on Mac OS, you're definitely locked in into the way that they want you to do things. You can adjust th some things such as um, how much translucency or uh, the, the colors and that kind of thing that you've got. Um, but really you're very limited in terms of what options you have um, to tweak out the system the way you like and the way you work. Um, on one side, this does give you a lot of different options in customizing the workflow that you want to use um, for your particular system. So for me, just hitting the command key and then typing, you know, what it is that I'm looking for, whether it's, um, let's just go music. Um, so that is very much how I run things uh, just on the regular in terms of a keyboard launcher and then just sort of typing away the option that I want to open. Um, on Mac, on Mac OS, that's for me, it's going to be command space with the Alfred 3 launcher, um, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, second thing is, I kind of already mentioned it, but hardware control. Um, hardware control on Linux is something that um, that you don't really, I guess, appreciate until you're stuck with something where you can't really control much of the hardware on your own. Um, especially with, uh, I think Windows and Apple both take the, the reins in terms of controlling your hardware, um, more so with Mac OS than uh, on Windows. But for an example, um, this, uh, let's see if I can find it, uh, MacBook Pro fan. Um, this package here, the MacBook fan control daemon. Um, so that's something that comes in the repositories as a part of Solus. And it's, uh, and it's meant to be a, a um, it's meant to be a controller for the fans in the MacBook to prevent it from overheating too much. Um, main reason because of that is the 
discrete graphics and the Intel graphics being on at the same time. And uh, honestly, the, the fan control for MacBooks isn't great. But my point being is that I can actually go in and tweak some of these things like uh, how often it revs up, um, at what temperatures the fan kicks in. I can have very granular hardware control over the laptop that I have to get the most performance out of it. To be able to go in and, uh, and tweak things like uh, where speed stepping is on an Intel processor or being able to ramp up uh, the, the frequency um, on, on your graphics chip or your Intel chip is, is something that the customization um, and the hardware control of Linux offers you. Whereas um, Mac OS is obviously, especially Mac OS on MacBooks is very locked down and, um, and Apple is the one that is in control of uh, yeah of your hardware um, through and through uh, to the point where if you have messed around a little bit with your hardware in another system um, Apple will very happily override it with a software update or something like that to kind of you know hose your system back to the way that they prefer it um, of course that's that's been their that's been their policy all the way along so I shouldn't really be surprised at this point okay next thing that I really appreciate about um, uh, uh, Linux and Solus in particular um, th in this in this particular circumstance is uh, is performance to a point. I say that with a big caveat in that um, the performance on Solus is very good, um, but again, you're kind of limited in terms of how much of the hardware has efficiently coded drivers for it because that's going to um, impact your performance in a big way. And uh, drivers for things like the um, the serial adder devices, so uh, you know your SSDs, drivers for your graphics cards, drivers for the Intel processor itself. All of these things, depending on how efficiently they are coded, will depend on how much performance you can get out of your hardware that you have. Now, the good news is, is that on most hardware, the the um, Linux drivers these days are actually very good to the point where you can definitely get more performance out of a Linux box than you could out of something that's running Windows or Mac OS. Um, I would also say that it, it also can very much depend on the desktop environment that you are running. So if, for example, you have slower hardware, you're not stuck with trying to eke every little bit of performance out of Mac OS or Windows by turning off graphical settings and all that kind of thing, you can just go ahead and install a completely different desktop environment. Something like LXDE or Mate or something that gives you um, a lot better bang for buck when it comes to your performance. Um, and that's something that I've always appreciated about Linux. You can, you can have a 15 year old computer and you don't have to write it off necessarily because chances are there's some really well coded software out there that'll run on super old hardware but keep you up to date with the important stuff. Uh, the other big thing, and I'm almost done here on the Linux side of things, is updates. When it comes to software updates, I think um, that Linux has been the, the benchmark for software updates um, and, uh, and app updates for, for ages. Um, the, obviously, the models of the App Store that we've seen from, um, from Apple and Google and, and others uh, are that all your software comes from one place and it gets updated regularly to keep it secure and, and efficient and all that kind of thing. And we saw that first on Linux with repositories and all that kind of thing. Now, obviously, today we've got a bit more complications in terms of uh, Snap and Flatpak as well. Uh, with those siloed applications. But by and large, especially on something like Solus, where you have a rolling release that can somehow manage to stay quite stable in terms of the core stuff, the kernel, the modules that are loaded in, etc. Um, but, the, but the surface level software is screamingly up to date. For example, um, I just read an article the other day that LibreOffice had shipped version 6.0, and I thought, oh, great. Uh, coming from mostly using Ubuntu and its derivatives in the past, I always thought, well, okay, it's time to go get a PPA and install the latest version of uh, LibreOffice. Well, not so with Solus. You can just jump in and chances are if you've run your update manager, the update is already sitting there waiting for you to use, which I think is just brilliant. Um, so in terms of using up-to-date, good quality, open source applications, um, you really can't get any better than, uh, than the Linux world and rolling releases in particular when they can nail that balance of, um, of stability and also having up-to-date uh, apps, up-to-date software for you to use. Um, finally, probably the biggest thing um, that, that we know about the open source world is the community. Um, obviously, there's plenty of help out there for, you know, for Apple based systems and Windows and all that kind of thing. But there's uh, definitely something very special about being able to go in and find a uh, and find a, um, a reverse engineered uh, guide to how to make your uh, FaceTime HD webcam work 
based on drivers from Mac OS. And, you know, and, and this is just some dude who's really good with code and, and, you know, collaborating with other people who are really good with code. I am not one of those people. I just get to benefit from it. Um, but there's something really special about that. And I think if you like technology if, and if you are a bit of a nerd, then this is going to be something that, um, that ultimately is, is a, a testament to human ingenuity um, on, on its face level. And uh, it's not hidden behind the walls of companies and, and all that kind of thing. It's just put out there for the world to use and you can take it or leave it, use what you want to. So, um, so on a side note, I haven't actually got the FaceTime HD camera working yet. That is a project in the works, but um, yeah, whatevs. Okay, so that's, that's the Linux side of things. 